What's going on, World Wide Web? Today is Saturday, October the 29th, 2016. And I am at Salem's Gyros and Subs in Tampa, Florida. The time now is about 12 somewhere, maybe one something. And in about two hours, I got a video shoot with uh, Israel, or Israel, my bad, I'm Israel. Israel, and uh, one of the fastest gunslingers of the South, the fastest Christian rapper there is, just about, second chance. Uh, I have a video shoot with them in about two hours, three o'clock somewhere over here in Tampa. Uh, but before then, I'm about to get it in, uh, fill my belly up a bit, you know, get some chicken and fries. Uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to free my hands and bring my camera along during the shoot. So it's the next day, Sunday, October 30th. Yesterday was a very, very interesting day. I had a music video shoot with the homie Nate, AKA Israel. And uh, the song was featuring Chance, Second Chance. <clears throat> I'm so used to saying Chance the Rapper now, I was about to say Chance the Rapper. Um, both dope rappers though. Chance the Rapper is a dope rapper and Second Chance is a dope rapper. Second Chance probably is the fastest Christian rapper there is. <clears throat> probably. But um, <clears throat> anyways, so the name of the song is called In the Turf That They Did, right? And um, it's about, you know, uh, some real deal Christians going into the gutters and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to like <clears throat> prostitutes, drug dealers, killers, and all that, right? So let me tell you a little story, right? Of what happened yesterday. My life could have ended yesterday, yeah. Uh, one, I'm very, very protective of my, uh, my equipment. And um, I'm very protective of my work. I take pride in my work and what I do. So we had the first shot on uh, Nebraska and Fowler and Tampa. For all you guys that live in the Tampa Bay area, I'm sure you know where that's at. Excuse me. In the old flea market parking lot. It's like it's an abandoned parking lot, whatever. So I wanted to get some shots in. Uh, Second Chance ha hadn't arrived yet, but a uh, few people that Israel asked to come to be in the shoot had arrived, and everybody was kind of scattered around the parking lot, but I took Israel off to go do some performance scenes to get some, you know, get my settings on my camera straight and whatnot, you know, kind of practice a bit before we really start getting it in. So we kind of went away 
not too far from the crowd. Like he had maybe, I want to say there's probably like 10 people there already, maybe seven to 10 people there already. And we went to like the corner of the building to start shooting some performance scenes. And uh, as we started shooting the first performance scenes, these dudes come up in a car. One was in the car, two of them got out. And the way they got out, they were like bopping their head to the music and stuff. And they kind of like eased their way in the shot. And I was like, you know, like, not right now, this is a solo shot. Thinking that these guys were friends of Israel. I didn't know that they weren't though. And the way it was played off, like they, they came in the shot, they put their arms around Israel, like Bob into the music. One had like a, a, a permethazine, how, how do you say that, the name of that drug? The, the drug that they use to make lean with. Uh, pardon me, I don't know my medical terms and stuff, but uh, anyhow, I'm thinking maybe it's a prop, you know, cause he's talking about, you know, uh, talking to people who talking about lean and smoking dope and all that kind of stuff. The dude pulls out the bottle, pulls it out like that, then he put it in his mouth. And the other dude in the shy, I didn't even notice at the time, but he was strapped. He had like a, uh, <clears throat> he had like a, uh, maybe a six shooter, something like that. It was a revolver. And it, it was in like his belt and his, his his pants. But anyways, like this whole time while I'm filming Israel, I had no idea that these guys were not with him. So, like I said earlier, I'm very protective of my shots and I'm very protective of my equipment. So, and keep in mind, I didn't see the gun and I'm not thinking nothing of it. So anyways, the shot ended. They started talking to Israel. Then I, listening to the conversation, I realized, oh, they don't know him and he don't know them. And the dude asking him, and they smelled like weed, but you know, sometimes a lot of these Christian rappers, they know people from the streets. And you know, a lot of the Christian rappers is from the street too. They like ex, you know, ex-cons or ex-thugs or whatever. So, you know, you never, I never think nothing of it. I don't expect everybody to be at the shoot old holier than thou or, you know, saved and sanctified or whatever. But anyways, they start rapping. Not rapping the song, but like, you know, chit chat. And at, at that point, I realized that, damn, these guys don't know him and he don't know them. So I got in protective mode and then keep him, I still haven't seen the gun at this point. I'm like, okay, their, their attitudes and their behavior was really, really strange. They were trying to sell him some of that lean, the promethazine, I think I said it right. They were trying to sell Israel some of that. And um, he was like, no, nah, man, I'm not on that, you know, I'm saved, I'm a Christian. Uh, as a matter of fact, are you listening to the lyrics in the song? I'm talking about, you know, helping witnessing the people that do this kind of stuff. And they like, oh, oh, we listening, we listening, whatever, you know. Uh, yeah, but the Lord ain't never said uh, nothing about not making no money or whatever. So he's like speaking really out of context about scripture and stuff. Not really even giving any like scripture. But then I tapped one of the other dudes that's on the set. I said, oh, he's setting himself up because I know Israel is one of them dudes who's going to like, you know what I'm saying, go to the scriptures and like redo his rights or whatever. So then I had my camera person filming, filming us. I was like, get this, get this, get this, whatever, right? And at the time I still didn't see the pistol on the home, on homeboy's hip or whatever. So my person started filming, you know, the whole like interaction between Israel and these dudes talking about scripture or whatever. And as my behind the scene footage is filmed, I noticed like they start acting even more strange. They like looking around, like kind of backing off, whatever. And then I came to my senses and I'm like, man, I think these dudes are about to jack us, like really about to rob us. And then I go back and I watch some of the performance footage of Israel. And I was like, you know what? My, my spider senses was tingling at that moment. I don't know why it was, wasn't tingling on the shoot, but I realized at that moment that them dudes was probably gonna jack us. And I, at the time I didn't realize there was another guy in the car.
I told you guys that at the beginning of the video, but I didn't know it then. But uh, thank y'all the most high that nothing did go down and that there were other people around because if it wasn't other people around, them dudes probably would have took my camera. They probably, I mean, cameras can be replaced, but what happened if somebody get trigger happy and wanna shoot you because they don't like the way you look or you don't see their face? I don't been robbed before. I don't been robbed twice before. So I know the feeling, I know what it's like. Um, both times I gave it up. Um, because ain't nothing worth more than your life. You can work hard and get it again or whatever, whatever. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you all. It was a very interesting shoot. And I, as I go back, I'm gonna show some of the footage if I haven't already while I was talking, but I'm gonna show you some of the footage. And you tell me what y'all think, okay? Look at the behaviors of the guys, how he's like, they both looking around, one of the dudes like, his shirt was covering his pistol at the time, but then he kind of lifted his shirt up. And it looked like they were like talking, communicating with each other. One was over here and one was over there, like, okay. And they were like looking around and stuff. And it was like, man, I'm just, it's crazy, man. So, and, and this dude, Israel, this is like our second experience, crazy experience uh, with something like this happening because a few years ago we had a shoot with Melo D and we was in St. Pete and a woman walked by and she was like, hey, what are you guys doing? We was like up on the hill and we was like shooting a music video and then she just, she flashed us and showed her, showed, her, show, showed us her boobs and make it so bad Melo D little son was on the shoot too. So anyways, um, I'm at my boy's house, the older boys and um, the mother's at school, uh, early day, uh, clinical day at school, so I'm here holding it down for them. I have no idea what we're going to do today. Um, I got a lot of editing to do. I still got to finish Michael Tarver, uh, B2.0's music video, and um, I have to finish some edits of uh, Urban D. So anyways, y'all have it. You're probably watching this Monday, although today is Sunday. You're probably watching this tomorrow. Hope y'all have a blessed beginning of the week. All right, peace. Sean getting gas cause his car is on low. Everybody looking at me funky and funny cause I got a camera up to my head. But hey, I'm a vlogger. But this ain't a game Been rapping for years And building my brand No label at all Just the help of the fans But now I'm on some Stick em up And I ain't talking on my truck And I ain't waiting on love They sleep as time